All right, so in this one, we are gonna create a super user or our admin user for our backend system that Django provides. There's an admin, as we see in this synchronized all migrations or apply all migrations, we have this admin section here. And this allows us to go into our database and make changes as we see fit, also dealing with the code and all the different apps that we will be working with. And we haven't talked about apps yet, but we will. But at this point, we wanna actually create what's called a super user or that admin user, the administrative user. We wanna create one of those. And it's really simple to do. There's a couple ways to do it. I'm gonna show you the first way is Python manage.py. And if you did SyncDB, what SyncDB does is it applies a migration. It runs Python manage.py migrate. And then it also gives us the option to create a super user if we have one. SyncDB is actually an older command for Django. It's not used nearly as much anymore because of migrate. But if we hit enter, we'll see that it does the migrations. And notice that SyncDB itself will be removed in Django 1.9. So in the next version, it, SyncDB just won't exist. But it, all, it also says it does run the migrations. And then it also says you don't have any super user defined. Um, so we wanna create one. In this case, I'm just gonna say no because there's another command for creating a super user which I would imagine is going to be supported in Django 1.9. So we'll do Python manage.py and it's just create super user, all as one word, you press enter. You can do this at any time, um, as long as you have access to manage.py, you can create a super user. You can create a username for it. So in this case, I'll say jmitchell3 and then email address coding for entrepreneurs at gmail.com. Of course, that is a real email address. And if you get absolutely stuck and you need some extra help or you have some questions about anything in particular, feel free to shoot us an email. Um, so there's that. And then as far as the password, since we are in development environment, we are practicing basically, um, we can put in whatever password. Once you go into having a full on service and you're in production, you wanna give a very strong password here, something that's that's really strong and hard to crack. For us, it's gonna be one, two, three, and that's the password that I created for this super user. So the code that's gonna be available on GitHub, you will be able to actually log in with this username and the password of one, two, three. Um, that will actually log you in. And again, you're not gonna to wanna to have this kind of super user in this way when you go production. All right, so let's go ahead and do python manage.py run server again. So run server is the command for actually running the development server. We've already seen this, but the development server meaning it's pretending to be a real live server. Um, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and close out this development server with control C. And if I go to that URL when the development server is not running, it gives me one of these. This page is not what this web page is not available. That's because it's a fake server. It's a development server. It's not real. It's good for testing and debugging and building and all that stuff. But it's not something that is actually doing a website uh, beyond our local environment or beyond our own computer or maybe our own network, um, right? So it's not like you can go to this web address and actually see what's on my computer. That's essentially what it is. All right, so let's run that server again. And now we'll go into the admin area. So let's make sure it's running and it says, congratulations on your first power page. Cool, still working. And if I go slash admin, I see this Django administration stuff. Um, I already have a password stored from a different project, but if you have jmitchell3 as my username and then password of 123, I can log in and this is the Django administration. Um, so what this means is we can actually customize everything that's in here. Something to note right off the bat is if we look at our migrations by scrolling up a little bit, we'll see that there's all different types of tables that are just not showing up here necessarily. And there's a few different apps that are also not showing up here necessarily. Um, so just because it's in the database does not mean that it's gonna be in the Django administration. There's actually a way to put things in the Django administration, which we'll show you. Um, but for the most part, the admin is made for, well, just your small team. You wouldn't want to use the admin for end users, like your customers. You wouldn't want to use it there. Um, it would just be for you and your small team to make changes to certain parts of the site, right? Like if you had, um, if you had like uh, a post that you wanted to delete, this is where you'd go to do it. 
Um, or if you had, you had, you know, certain permissions that you wanted to give to, let's say for instance, your assistant, that's, that's where you would do it in here. Um, so if you go into users, we can see this user here, notice the password is in a hash. So this is a good thing. Raw passwords are not stored. Um, this is a very safe way to actually store passwords and Django handles all that security stuff for us, which is awesome. Um, but this is a, kind of gives you a feel for what you can do as an admin user or, or the super user. You can change all different types of things here, uh, like their status and their permissions. You can add groups if you have groups. You can add specific permissions. And these permissions themselves have something to do with um, actual the Django administration itself. It doesn't necessarily mean anything beyond that, but that's something as well. And then it gives us some other dates and all this stuff. Um, so the admin itself is a very powerful tool for Django for actually making changes to specific data in the database if you don't want to have to build it on the outside of the admin, um, which is something we are actually going to do is we're going to build stuff outside of the admin because we want to make something that users use, not something that just we would use. So um, that's it for this one. If you have any questions on that, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.